The vacated seat at the cabinet table interested photographers most, but hot on the heels of Carl Theodor zu Gutenberg's departure, their focus has moved to his successor, Thomas de Maizière, previously interior minister. Thomas de Maizière will win the confidence of the troops and above all succeed in implementing the reforms to the military that were started by Carl Theodor zu Gutenberg. Less than 24 hours earlier, zu Gutenberg resigned as defense minister. Despite being the country's most popular politician in opinion polls, the pressure from colleagues and the media over revelations of his plagiarized doctoral dissertation proved decisive. The opposition openly called the aristocrat and conservative politician a fraud, while the country's academic elite gave him the cold shoulder. He may even face prosecution. I was always willing to fight, but I have reached the limits of my strength. Thank you. Chancellor Merkel remains a solid supporter. I regret his resignation, but I also appreciate his personal decision. I'm sure a lot of people across the country think the same. The chancellor is acting here as party chairwoman, and she has an eye on the elections. She knows that some members of the party remain on zu Gutenberg's side, regardless of how he got his academic qualifications. If she were to try to distance herself from him, they'd hold it against her and say he'd been damaged enough by political rivals. They'd never forgive her for kicking a man when he's down. Last November, zu Gutenberg went to Afghanistan to visit German troops, with whom he's hugely popular. He made more official visits than any defense minister before him. There are no hard feelings towards him here, despite mistakes in military-related decisions and other affairs, like his handling of political fallout from an airstrike on two oil trucks in Kunduz in September 2009. For soldiers there, the doctorate issue is the least of their concerns. And back home as well, these young recruits look up to zu Gutenberg. It's a shame. I liked what he achieved. It's a bit underhanded what they did to him. I think they simply wanted to get rid of him. They also backed the reforms zu Gutenberg initiated. Late last year, the German government decided to scrap compulsory military service in favor of a professional armed forces. That's his legacy. He kicked off the debate and got the CSU on board. People will also remember that he recognized the right moment to say that we no longer needed compulsory military service. So Gutenberg will be sorely missed by the conservatives during this year's election campaigns. He has fantastic public appeal and is a very popular interview subject. His resignation has put the Chancellor and the Conservatives on the defensive with the opposition gaining new confidence. Decency and honor in the academic world are the last things on these gentlemen's minds. What they are most concerned about is how they can harm us. And the party leader herself is now coming under attack. This overdue resignation is a huge embarrassment for Chancellor Angela Merkel. She indulged in maneuvering while hoping the crisis would die down. The big mistake Angela Merkel made is about special privileges for politicians. This wasn't just a little bit of cheating, it was a serious offense. Meanwhile, there's a growing movement on the Internet of those angry about the resignation. A Facebook page with several hundred thousand supporters is calling for his return. Next week, there are plans for demonstrations across the country. His successor, Thomas de Maizière, is a different species of politician. Sober, straightforward and no frills. The more glamorous zu Gutenberg will be a tough act to follow in terms of both personal image and policymaking.